Hey, good morning everybody. We're on trail here. We've gone maybe an eighth of a mile and we have stopped here to look at these wonderful rocks. And um, we're gonna try to do 14 today and then head to yet another hostel because we like to sleep inside when it's cold. All right, I'll get back all with y'all later. Have a good one. I'm gonna drop we had to clear some down trees from the storm the night before. Oh, that worked. Okay. Thanks, guys. We have been climbing for a bit and we're maybe a third of the way there. I just did the math from the elevation where we started this morning and the highest point that we're heading to. Total elevation today gain is probably, I'm guessing, somewhere in the neighborhood of 5,000 feet, which is a bunch. Um, it's also gonna be longest day so far. I'm looking to do 14 miles, so uh, I'll keep bringing you along here and there. The river down there, going through that valley, it's beautiful. Just wanted to show you all this really cool rock face covered in moss and the waterfall coming off of it. And one thing I've been trying to do is just share the real, real stuff and the realities of being out here. So the water and all the toilets was like a pinkish reddish brown. So she turned on the sink and the water was running out of the faucets the same way. So I'm sure it was just sediment or something, but we none of us wanted to drink that water this morning. We did boil some and make coffee. Um, and we actually boiled it, not, not in a regular pot, coffee pot. So we left this morning with pretty much no water and had to hike about two miles before we found a good water source. So when I got there, I did chug a liter, cambled up a little bit, so I didn't have to carry so much on all these climbs today. But I am carrying, I think about a liter and a half right now. I think both of my bottles are about three quarters of the way full. But anyway, I don't know what caused that water being that color. We were speculating it may have had something to do with the forest fires that were very nearby last night, but I don't know that for sure. It almost feels warm up here. It's been a chilly morning. And there's like, I guess, Spanish moss all over these trees. It's pretty neat. Wow, look at this. Okay, had a great find just now. So I think on day three or four, my sunglasses broke. They had mirrored lenses on and they got so scratched that I couldn't see through them. So I ditched them. I just got up the top of one of these climbs and on a rock, I found these glasses. Now I don't know if they're my color. They're mostly pink, but hey, they work. I'll wear them until someone tells me they're theirs. The view from the top of Chihuahua Bald. Wow. It's just beautiful. Even better than the view from Chihuahua Bald is being done climbing. How do you feel about being done climbing for the day? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Feels good. Feels good. Man, a few words here. Come along. <laughs> I still have not found the owner of these sweet new pink sunglasses. So um, I'm kind of hoping I don't. They're great lenses. I kind of like wearing them. Um, so I think the last thing I showed you all was the views on top of Chioa Bald. And let me tell you, <clears throat> that place is just beautiful. And um, we ended up sitting there with our shoes off and just laying down and chatting. There was <clears throat> myself, 
Disco, Come Along, R Dot, and a couple others that um, I don't really know that well kind of stopped in. I was up there for at least an hour and a half for two hours, just kind of enjoying the view and relaxing. It was oddly up top, there was almost no wind and the sun was warm. It's been pretty cold on and off today. Um, sun is bright and sunny, but I do have three layers on. I'm still wearing my rain jacket. Um, so one thing I also mentioned earlier that I don't know that I've ever explained, I mentioned the term platinum blazing and I was just kind of kidding because we have been doing a good number of uh, hostels and hotel stays, which I'm fine with. Um, I'm here to for the experiences and hanging out with different people and making connections with people. And you know, that's all part of it. The other thing is we've had some cold, windy nights. So it's, um, it's nice to be inside. <laughs> I don't expect once the weather warms up a little bit that uh, I'll be staying in hotels or hostels nearly as much. But hey, you know, it's really not that expensive. Like the bunk last night, I ended up paying 30 bucks. Uh, the bunk tonight's 30 bucks. So 30 bucks a night, and that includes showers and laundry if you need it and all that. So really not a big deal. The other thing, there is supposed to be a convenience store right next to this hostel. And I am craving some salt and vinegar chips. I wanted some yesterday and I couldn't find any. So I settled for a different kind, but I want some salt and vinegar chips. All right, so I think I'm about two miles from Stokoa Gap. And once uh, the three of us get there, uh, Disco will come along and myself, we will call uh, the hostel and they'll come pick us up. And I will get back with you all at some point before the end of the night. Good morning. Okay, so I never did a closeout video last night. That's because we got to this hostel and it's a really cool one. And I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to give you guys a hostel tour in a second. So we got picked up at the Gap. The hostel is only about two miles from uh, where we stopped hiking yesterday. There is a convenience store literally right here. So it was really nice. We got to walk down there and get some salt and vinegar chips and some other, we actually, Disco decided that we were gonna buy several bags of uh, crazy flavored chips and we did a taste testing. I think we had like pickled chips and some salt and vinegar and some other sriracha, something or other, but they were really good. Um, also Lonnie, the owner of Stokoa Wolf Creek Hostel where we're at, had a couple pizzas that he gave us all and um, that was really good. So this is a cool hostel because it's actually the house that Lonnie grew up in and it just sits by itself here next to the Moonshiner 28, which is a road that I've ridden my motorcycle on. Um, and basically Lonnie doesn't even live here. He lives somewhere else. So there's just eight hikers here and we have the whole house to ourselves. It was, it was really nice. It was probably one of the coolest hostel stays I've had just because it was so chill. We all had, there was no more than two people in a room, which was really nice. So there's only a few of us left here. Uh, just come along, Disco and I, and two other people, uh, Biscuits and Keto are still here. Everyone, the other few already left on earlier shuttles. All right, so let's go ahead and go inside and we're gonna do a hostel tour. All right, so we brought our shoes inside uh, because it's cold, that way they can warm up before we put them on. But they do ask that you leave your trekking poles and your shoes outside just to not track any kind of mud in. Okay, here's the living room. There's come along the, all the, the, the ugly old man on trail. Um, so Keto, you're doing a lot better job on that chair than come along. Did he flipped over and dumped all of his chips out last night? Yeah. And this is Biscuits the man, the myth, the legend. Now Biscuits, you rode your, your bicycle how far across the country? Or all the way across? All the way across, both coasts. Dude, that's awesome. This, is, this hike to be nothing for you. <laughs> all right so this is the room that come along and i stayed in uh come along had this big bed right here and i had this this one right here there's one bed in this room uh, a lady was in there by herself let's see she's gone so let's look at this room that's a nice room the bathroom right there and then there's another bedroom back here but disco is in there She's not yet emerged, so we won't go bother her. 
One thing that was really cool about this room is this old stove. I, I'm not sure how old it is. I think the guy said about 40 years old. And then <laughs> this is the community kitchen. And let's see, there's a couple coffee pots over here. We had some coffee this morning and it's a nice big open kitchen. Another thing that's pretty cool is he has a computer and a printer here so you can print your Smokies permits. And this are hiker boxes, which are basically stuff that hikers don't need that they leave behind so other hikers can possibly use. And then going back to this back room, there's a washer and a dryer. And what, the dryer is broke, so we didn't get to do laundry. Um, but we just did laundry a day ago, so no problem. Here are some loaner clothes. And then back here, there's another bedroom where Keto and Andrew were. I think this one's nicer than our bedroom. And there's even a piano. I guess that's a piano. And then there's another bathroom back here. All right, that's it. So that's that's kind of the a quick overview of what a hostel is like. It's basically just a house that you share with a bunch of people. Five of us that stayed at the hostel last night decided to opt for the latest possible shuttle. We did not get picked up to come back to the trail till 9.30 this morning. We didn't sleep in or anything. Most of us were up, but we just decided that we would sit around, have some coffee and relax and chat. And it was a really good time. Got out here right when we got to the trail. Uh, one of our friends, Dogfish, had just gotten um, down to the trail. She'd camped on trail last night. So the six of us, and then another kid I don't really know, um, hiked along with us for a while. And then I've been maybe a mile or mile and a half. And then I've been hiking by myself for a bit. So today should be a pretty easy day. After the 14 yesterday, you know, yesterday was our biggest hiking mileage day, as well as the most elevation gain in a day that we've had yet. Um, so put all that together. And today we just have a, you know, nine or 10 miles. That's gonna put us just a few miles before Fontana, where we will take a short day or a Nero into Fontana on Tuesday and then zero on Wednesday. And Disco's husband's coming to hang out with her and us, I'm sure some. And then after that, our platinum blazing, which I don't know that I ever fully defined in the past videos yesterday. I started to and then got off track. Um, wow, this is muddy. <coughs> um, platinum blazing basically just refers to spending a lot of money on trail or more so than necessary. So generally that means eating at restaurants and staying in town a little more, which as I've said, I'm perfectly fine with, especially in the colder weather. Still having a blast, have had no negative feelings at all on trail. So we're gonna keep doing what we're doing. However, after Fontana, our platinum blazing will come to an end for a while because we'll go into the Smokies. And then I think with the Smokies and the stretch after the Smokies where there's not much for hostels or hotels for a bit, um, I think it's 115 miles we'll have to do without staying inside. So that'll be the longest stretch of, of no showers, but you know, it's part of the trail. All right, well, give you one last shot. Let me see if I can't zoom in because I'm pretty sure that's Fontana Lake in the distance. You can see the water a little bit through there. I think that's the edge of Fontana Lake. Hey, good evening. We had a really good day today. It was a fairly easy day. We got dropped off by the shuttle early this morning. Okay, not very early, like 9.30 this morning. And we did only about nine miles. Got to camp early. We played a little bit with the pitch of the tents and Disco gave me some pointers and taught me how to pitch my tent a little bit better. So that was nice. Um, and we just kind of hung out at this shelter area here, just got done eating dinner, got our twofers brushed. And um, here's the, the Z-Pax duplex army of tents behind me. Um, I think we're just gonna hang out and chill a little bit for this evening. And then we're going to be only going, I don't know, less than six miles, I think 5.9 miles into Fontana tomorrow. So we'll have one short day and then we're gonna take a full day off and then we hit the Smokies. All right, so I'll get back with you in the morning. Well, the
<laughs> do your disco. No, you gotta do disco. There you go. Maybe we should practice like you used to do the pretzel years ago. <laughs> oh, like that little thing. Oh yeah, I was all about. We have... My sister would grab me and throw do me out on the floor and show me. The disco to... is sort of I don't know. It's... <laughs> right? Uh, I don't know. You're old enough. Good morning. Man, yesterday was a really good day, a really good hike. And then last night after I closed out the video, the three of us decided to make a small fire right between our tents and we sat out there for another hour or so. Um, it was just a really good chill day, chill evening. And then I, uh, we all slept in, didn't get started till like nine o'clock this morning or a little after nine maybe. What I am gonna show you before I stop here is I'm getting the first big view of Fontana Lake. Down through the trees there is Fontana Lake. The views on this camera just do not do it justice. We made it to Fontana, heading down to the marina for a beer. Hey, okay, so we had a really good day here in Fontana. We stopped at the marina right when we got into the parking lot. Had a couple beers there. We actually got them to go. We got up to the lodge, we waited a little bit. They have a really cool fireplace and sitting area inside the Fontana Lodge. So we kind of sat there and hung out with some other hikers for a bit until our room was ready. Got showered, I went and had lunch, I had a great salad. And then we went, went down and did laundry later on. And then after that, we got dinner. And now it's about 8.30 or nine o'clock at night and pretty much all the hiker chores are done. We have most of a zero day plan tomorrow. We may end up doing a couple miles just through, through Fontana Village between the marina and the shelter. Um, it's about a two mile stretch or something. That way we don't have to do it on Thursday morning when we head into the Smokies. There's a lot of people that hold up here because we have a really big weather event coming in. Tomorrow, it's supposed to be 75 degrees down here in the lower elevations. However, tomorrow night, it's looking at to be like up to 80 mile an hour winds up at elevation in the Smokies. So we're definitely going to be here again. We are planning that anyway for a zero day. Thursday is supposed to rain all day, but we're, we're still planning to go ahead and go into the Smokies on that day when it's supposed to rain. And the Smokies should take us five to six. And then we may also just be in the woods and not, not in a town for another two days after that until we get to Hot Springs, North Carolina. All right, I hope you're all having a good evening and I will talk to you soon.